hey guys. So we found this chair on a curb and we want to redo it with paracord. No, we didn't destroy it. That'd be wasteful. So if you have a patio chair that's laying around, don't throw it away just yet. You can actually upcycle it using some paracord. I'm going to show you how to reweave this chair so that it's better than new. So for this project, I'm estimating that you need about a thousand feet of paracord and that'll cover the base of it, the chair, and the back as well. Um, I've got two different colors here that we're going to weave, but you can also do it with just one. So to start off, I'm going to be weaving the first color um, up and down the chair. And so just with one unbroken strand, we're going to start in the front here and go back and forth, weaving around this middle bar and up to the top and then back. Um, so we want to first attach it with a constrictor knot, and I'll show you how to do that here. So to begin, we want to bring our working end over the top of our bar. And I'm going to make this on top, but you'll probably want to do it on bottom so it's more hidden. Bring it around to one side, and then cross it over your standing end. Bring it around again to the same side, and then bring it over that. And then you want to go under this cord and under this cord. So I need to loosen my knot a little bit to go underneath right here and then back underneath this way to the middle. So that knot just cinches down really nice and tight and isn't very bulky. You can cut the end off at this point. And then we'll use our lighter to seal the end, if I can get it without wind here. Press that against the knot and that makes a nice flat edge so that it won't pull through the knot. So once you've got your cord tied on, and before we get to our weaving, there's a couple things that we have to take care of. This chair is not square, um, but our weave will be square. And so we've got to adjust accordingly. And we want to wrap around this corner first before we get into our weave. Otherwise, when we do start weaving, it's going to want to slide around that corner. So what I do is grab a yardstick, a ruler, or a measuring tape, and measure the width of the back of it. So I've got about 10 inches there in between. So I want to also measure 10 inches in the front and just center that. And so we've got to get all the way to here with just a wrap around the bar. So we've got our constrictor knot there. We can just start wrapping it around. When you're within a half inch of where you want to be, um, you can go ahead and cut your cord. Just leave about a half foot to tie another constrictor knot on the end. Same method here, we just want it to end up on the bottom. So that corner's done. We just want to finish that up on our others. So I need to make one here. And then actually on our top, we need a couple inches on either side as well. Um, the goal is to make it a square in the end. So we want this line to be perpendicular to the back of our chair. So after you've got all four of your corners tied, we're ready to start the weave. So I've taken two cords and tied them with a constrictor knot to the front of our chair, and then wrapped them in tandem around this cord winder tool. Um, you can find this in our store, and if you don't have one, you can also use just a quick release hank, and we'll link to that in the description so you know how to do that. Um, it just helps to have your cord all wrapped up so that it doesn't get tangled up while you're weaving. Um, to explain the methodology a little bit, I'm starting on the top of the bar here, and so on the next one I want to go underneath. And I'm going to continue that pattern of over under. So go around to the bottom, and then bring it around back to the front on the top bar. And then before we head back the other direction, we just want to wrap it once around that top bar. And we'll do that on both ends when we come to them. And then on the way back, because we're coming from underneath this bar, we want to go over the middle one. And to do that, we've got to wrap once around that one as well. And then to complete our full first row, we'll come underneath that front bar and wrap once around. And we're ready to do that pattern all over again. We'll continue on doing that all the way across the chair. We just want to scrunch our weave together as we go to make it nice and tight. So 
unless you're really good at estimating, you're going to run out of cord in the middle of your project. And that's okay. You can just make a knot to handle that. Um, I've run out of cord here. I'm about halfway through my blue. And so I'm going to use a double fisherman's knot to attach a new cord so that I can keep on weaving. It works best if you can hide that on the bottom of your chair, um, but the double fisherman's is a nice enough looking knot that it doesn't really matter if that's not the case. So I'm just going to do it right next to the bar so that you can't even see it. We'll put a link in the description to where you can learn how to do the double fisherman's knot if you're not familiar with it. So there's our double fisherman's knots and we can just tuck them right underneath and keep on weaving. It's our second day on this project here at Paracord Planet. We finished up the blue yesterday with some constrictor knots up at the top here and we're all ready to go with our pink cord. Um, this part's going to be a lot harder because we've got to weave back and forth but it really is a lot more rewarding too because you get to see the final result take shape. On the second color we're not going to be using the winder tool just because it's a little bit too wide to fit through weaving back and forth. And so we've just taken 50 feet of paracord, folded it in half, so we've got a fold that we can shove through our weave. We'll also be using a yardstick to pull our weave apart. So to start off, we just want to bring our yardstick through where it naturally fits up in front, right here. Because we went over the top, going down to the bottom, all of our cords crisscross in the middle, and so if it's on the bottom down here, we want to be weaving our cord underneath. So what the opposite of where it would naturally go. So you can just push our crisscrossing back to here. And I'm going to flip this up sideways. So we've got some nice weaving room to go through. So grab that middle and send it through. And on our cross weave like this, we're starting on the top of the pole here, and we're going to be ending on the top of the pole. We're not doing the over on one side, under on the other, like we did with the blue. So pull all of your cord through. Once you have it laying flat, you want to get it as far back as you can. And you can either take your yardstick out at this point, or grab another board or something to push it with, and just push your weave back towards the end. Um, I can actually take my yardstick out at this point because that weave is done. And that actually kind of holds it in place nice. Then you can just use it to push. You want to keep some tension on the other end of your line. And then push your cord back towards the back of the seat. You want to make sure that this is nice and straight because this is going to set the pattern for your entire weave. You can also go back and adjust that a little bit later. All right, so this weave is going to be a little bit farther apart than our blue. Our blue touches each other in the middle here. We're going to be leaving a little bit of a gap with our pink. So before we head back the other direction, I'm going to wrap it twice around this pole on the side. So one, two, and then we're going to be coming back across from bottom to bottom. And then we'll repeat our pattern and go back again. So I'm going to let this string go for a little bit. And now it's going to be a little bit more difficult to spread our weave in the right direction. We're going to have to weave back and forth. Every one that's on the top here, we want to push down to the bottom. And every bottom one, we want to bring to the top. That's going to give us that nice checkerboard pattern in the final result. You want to be careful not to mess this part up because then your pattern is going to look wrong. So now at this point, if your weave is loose enough, you can pull your yardstick up sideways again. Mine's pretty tight, and so I'm just going to leave it how it is. Then we'll take our fold, wrapped around twice, and we're going to send it back through just kind of using our fingers to help it along. I want to make sure you don't miss any weaves or get out of the spot it's supposed to be in. There we go. And I think we crossed cords. We've got to fix that.
And then you just want to repeat again, take your yardstick out and use it to push your weave together. All right, there's our second row done. We've squished them together really well. Um, you'll find that as you add more layers on, it becomes easier to scoot those farther back layers. Um, so you might even want to just do a couple layers ahead, leave them crooked, and then align them and tighten it up. So we're gonna fast forward through this and we'll catch you when we get to the other side of this chair. So the chair is all done. We've weaved our last weave and cut the ends and sealed them nice. There are a couple things that I would do differently if I were to do this project again. Um, just some problems that I faced with this weave on this particular chair. Um, one of those is this green cord. It was awfully close to the edge so that it made us do some kind of diagonal lines to get it to work. Um, whereas up here it was wider and so we don't have quite as steep of lines. Not a big deal. Um, and then I could have hidden my ends better when I sealed them. But all in all, I think it turned out very well. Time to test it out. Thanks for joining us for this video. If you liked it, let us know down in the comments. We'll put links down in the description to where you can buy Paracord for yourself if you want to take on this project. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm definitely sinking into the ground again. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>